Okay, hi there guys. Someone sent me an email asking about Windows API. He wanted me to explain the Windows API library. Uh, first, uh, I'm sorry, I cannot explain the library because first, it's very big. Um, second, uh, I don't use it very often. Okay, uh, there are a few, few cases when you use them, but uh, I will demonstrate a uh, few things here. So, uh, what are we going to do? We are going to talk about these here okay uh, we're gonna answer a few questions and talk about a few things and uh, hopefully you will have an idea ab about Windows API and how it works so what's Windows API well uh, every operating system should provide a number of services okay the job of the operating system is to manage your computer and allow the programs to work uh, uh, in, in the uh, environment that your operating system creates so um, for the programs to work correctly they might need to access memory access for example the display do stuff like that and uh, the operating system must make sure that everything runs well and uh, everything is safe and stuff like that so um, operating system must uh, provide the required resources for the program when they need them and uh, release the resources uh, and, uh, and so on. Now, uh, in order for the program to communicate with the operating system and send its commands to the operating system and vice versa, uh, there is a set of functions uh, or uh, subroutines that uh, can be called from within your programs and these are you uh, co what they call Windows API these are available uh, provided by the operating system and so they are provided for every available program on your computer and uh, theoretically they should be uh, you should be able to uh, call the Windows API from uh, uh, from within any uh, program regardless of the underlying programming language okay so I hope this first explain uh, the, the Windows API the second question is where are these API's found well these API's can be found in uh, in a number of DLL's if you go to Wikipedia and search for Windows API uh, you will find that uh, the, the Windows API is categorized in, into a number of groups and each group is stored within a DLL so you can see here for example kernel 32 has to do with memory management, threading and stuff like that um, you have uh, for example uh, GDI32 for graphics uh, you have uh, COM control 2 and so on. So if you want to access any kind of Windows API you need to know what group it lies in and then you will be able to know the DLL file and uh, you can call that function. Okay, now um, now uh, let me show you how, how can I use them. Well, uh, I am not gonna write an example for you here because I really need them. However, um, let me show you this twin library that uh, that I've been uh, working on t for a while. Um, you see here in this sample code, there is, for example, this function: global allocate, global lock, and global unlock. These are Windows API. If you look at them, well, they look like normal uh, VB.NET functions well uh, they are not exactly the same the reason for that is if you go and see the definition of these functions let me s show you okay so if you go here where is it where is it where is it uh, okay uh, look at here look at this location here here is where I define these functions so uh, you can see here this is a global allocate. I added this attribute Okay, it's DLL on port. I write the DLL name and then I write the function name I uh, that I want to access within that DLL Okay, and then I must provide the number of parameters and stuff like that Okay, 
so if you look at the implementation for this function there is no implementation here that's because all the code is available in the DLL itself here you are just defining what the call to the function look like that's all uh, same goes here so in order to use um, and a Windows API you just need to define it you need to indicate uh, what the DLL file is uh, you need to provide the name of the DLL function and then you need to provide the parameters okay now where do, where do you get, get these well you need to check the documentation of the Windows API so that you can come and, and write uh, the code correctly here okay so this is how you can access the Windows API. Uh, uh, after you define it like this, you can call it like any other normal function. You just write the name of the function and pass the parameters. Well, uh, well, this is not the only difference. Uh, there are a number of other differences that you must keep in mind when you want to use the Windows API. Uh, okay. First of all, uh, in order to understand what am I going to talk about here, you need to know what is managed code and what is unmanaged code. Well, uh, ma uh, when you say managed code, when you run your program, uh, your vb.net program, uh, if you compile and build your program, it will not compile into code that's being executed directly by the hardware. Instead, uh, it will be compiled into a form that will uh, I think it's called uh, intermediate language IL and this will be executed by um, the .NET framework in other words uh, the .NET framework is very similar to a virtual machine it's like Java virtual machine when it converts the Java code into bytecode so that your code will not be executed directly on the hardware it will be executed by uh, some kind of other uh, uh, of other program that will translate your work into into the the uh, machine uh, in, into the uh, actual machine or the actual hardware okay so this is managed code and uh, uh, and uh, when you write your program you write your own functions all of this will be in managed code okay the other things uh, you have is the unmanaged code and the difference is that this code usually runs uh, directly on the hardware itself it will not get interpreted it will use the actual hardware and because of that it's gonna be uh, very fast now uh, Windows API as far as I understand uh, they are uh, they run in unmanaged code which means first they are very fast and second this means that the mode of program execution here differs from the mode over here okay and when you try to run unmanaged code within your program you might encounter some bugs some errors you must pay very uh, close attention to the code uh, you must check for error uh, more uh, let's let's say you must be more careful okay because these are two different execution modes uh, obviously um, I, I guess uh, th this would be faster however it will be more complex to uh, to work with because Windows API is not as easy as uh, as uh, uh <coughs> As, as the uh, ma managed code or the library provided to you by the .NET framework okay uh, I guess I, I could show you an example here for example uh, if you want to work with threading okay this is thread code now let's say you want to create a thread that runs here well all you have to do is use these two lines of code uh, in order to create a thread okay okay so let's have a look at the windows api that will uh, create a thread for you so uh, this is the definition of uh, uh, sorry this is uh, the definition of c language for uh, creating threads and uh, what you can see here is that there are too many parameters to create a thread 
uh, unlike unlike the uh, our dot net you don't need to provide anything all you have to do is create a thread object and provide the address of the function and then you start the thread uh, and whatever you want to do you just write t dot or, or the thread object dot and you will be able to do whatever you like with this uh, thread so in other w other words the using the uh, the existing library will make your life easier while using the windows api it will uh, it will will make things a little bit more complicated you need to understand all of these okay in order for your code to run uh okay so let's go back to our questions here uh, so now you understand what is managed code and what is unmanaged code. So what's the alternative to Windows API? Well, uh, uh, .NET Framework will provides you with a library that uh, that is enough for your work to uh, f uh, that is enough for you to finish your work without the need for Windows API. It's very rare that you will need to access the Windows API. Uh, unless you want to achieve some kind of speed okay or for example you want to communicate with some kind of another program okay so i would guess these are the only cases when you need to do that um yeah so uh, yeah. now let's go to the last question here is when to use them well, my guess is that you need to use Windows API whenever you want to gain speed, okay, uh, or when there are a number of functions that are not provided by the .NET framework. Um, okay, uh, you must keep in mind is that using Windows API is not as easy as using the standard API. Um, the uh, the code uh, execution is. <coughs> Sorry, uh, the code execute in native uh, code. Uh, sorry, an unmanaged code, and your program will get executed in managed code, and uh, you might get problems uh, because of that if you pass parameters incorrectly. Um, okay, yeah. Um, I guess that's all about uh, Windows APIs. I I hope you'll find this useful.